I think that's Mount Pisgah. <laughs> It's now raining, but I'm actually quite happy that it's raining. There was a whole bunch of people and everybody left <laughs> because of the rain. So now I'm up here by myself and I'm super excited because I don't really mind the rain. It's downpouring pretty bad right now. <laughs> but I'm honestly super happy that it's raining because it's really refreshing now that I just hiked all the way up the mountain and I'm just going downhill. I don't know, it gives the whole forest like a spooky vibe. should be on it this is so crazy like I could just do whatever I want I'm not on anyone's schedule I love this like death is fine you know everyone like death is beautiful but like I don't want to die anytime soon I love life <laughs> you know I just I love it I want to remember this forever, but that's why death is what makes life so crazy and beautiful. Like, in, I'm gonna cry. Like the reason we are so moved by how beautiful the earth is, is because it is us. Like it's what we are made of. And it's like recognizing that, how magical and beautiful it all is, is also recognizing how magical and beautiful we are it's who we are i don't know how to explain it honestly i really don't know how to explain what i'm feeling anyways since i'm already up here in the mountains i might as well uh look for another trail to go on i think That was interesting, but totally worth it. Wow, this is crazy. Oh my god, this thing is like really loose. <laughs> wow, this is actually really sketchy. Wow, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Holy cow.
So that's Mount Pisgah. That's where I was this morning on my hike, the cell tower that I was at. Damn, this is really sketchy, not gonna lie. It's like shaking so much. This is really cool. I would totally live in here. Oh look, soy sauce. This is just unbelievable. Holy smokes. Insane. I just uh, rinsed off at an Anytime Fitness. And filled up my water jug. So I think I'm gonna make dinner and uh, probably sleep here again. Wait, yes, I'm Mr. Can't you see? I got to get back to my baby. So the past couple of days, I've been venturing to the mountains and hikes and things, and then I kept going back into town to sleep at Anytime Fitness so I could shower there. But I'm tired of that. I feel like disappearing into the woods. <laughs> so I came to this trailhead. It's about a nine mile hike. Uh, it's a loop. I usually go out and back, but this one's a loop, so I'm excited. Bye, Electra. See you in five hours. This is by far the most difficult hike I've ever done. I'm using my tripod to get the spiders because there's a lot of spiders in here. So that's where I have to keep going. But there's this little lookout point and I was not expecting this at all. I did not realize I climbed this high. My phone is about to die. I'm actually kind of scared. I know I'll be fine, but. You guys, <clears throat> that trail humbled me. I am so exhausted mentally and physically that I don't even have the energy to describe it right now. So I'm just going to relax by this river. I'm gonna rest and recover. And then I will tell you the story in a couple days. <laughs> Hi, 
So now that it's been about five days since that hike and I'm good, <laughs> I wanted to tell you guys a story of how I got lost in the woods. So that day I had planned on taking the nine mile loop. I was pretty prepared when I left, had my phone charged. I had just eaten a huge meal, had a full thing of water. The trail itself was supposed to be very challenging um, because there was a lot of landslides recently in that area. So there was a lot of detours you had to take. Um, it was very overgrown. There was a fork at almost every turn. You really did have to use the, the map constantly to navigate, which is why my phone ended up dying because I was using the map so much to navigate. And I didn't realize that it was gonna die that quick because normally on most hikes, I'm not constantly using the map. I'm usually taking a pretty clear path where I can just click navigate, put my phone in my pocket and do the hike. But this time I'm using my phone constantly. So I ended up getting to that lookout point um, in the video and I wasn't tired, I wasn't hungry, and I had done most of the, the trail pretty quickly. So I figured I, sh I could add another eight miles, eight or nine miles to the hike, because there was different paths you could take. So I decided to add miles to the hike, and then I got to the, the final loop where, you, where you're, I'm farthest away from my car. I think it was about 10 miles at that point away from my car, or nine miles. So I had to go all the way back at this point. And I get to the top and I realized that my phone was on 10%. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is really bad. This is really bad. There's no way I could navigate my way back, whether I keep going forward on the loop and go the other way down the mountain that I haven't gone before, or whether I go the same way that I came, there's no possible way that I could figure that out. There was a few points where I did completely lose the path. I needed to completely rely on the map to get me back. So. I tried to not panic. I was like, okay, I'll figure this out. Um, I think the scariest part was that I hadn't seen a single soul the entire like six or seven hours that I had been hiking already. <laughs> so I ended up looking at the map as best I could. I figured I would just try to memorize it or like look for some something that I could use to get back to my car. And there was a river if I, if I went straight uh, ahead on the loop back around the way that I hadn't come before. There was a river after about four miles that was the same river next to where my car was parked. So that made me feel better because this way, as long as I get to that river, I could kind of use it as a navigation tool even if I completely lost the path. I ran down the mountain as fast as I could. That's how I got this cut. <laughs> I kept falling, hurting my ankles. I didn't make it back to the river. I ended up, my phone ended up dying before I got to the river. So that sucked, that was very scary. Um, I started accepting that there's a real possibility I might actually be out there all night. Uh, <laughs> and so I have two phones. Uh, one of them doesn't have service at all. I just use it as an extra camera because I had already paid it off. I ended up pulling that out um, after walking aimlessly for about an hour. And I realized that even though there was no service on it whatsoever, for some reason when I went to the All Trails app, even though it didn't let me navigate or show me anything at all besides where my dot was, and the closest road, it did show where the closest road was for some reason. So that made me feel so much better because no matter what, even if I wasn't able to find my car on the path that I was walking, I could push my way through the woods to that road and then that would allow me to find my car or at the very least to find another person so I could ask them for help in getting back to my car. So that made me feel a whole lot better. Uh, long story short, I found my way back to my car. I ended up choosing the right paths by guessing and using my intuition, I guess. I made it back to my car. It was a learning experience. Um, I'm definitely not gonna add another nine miles onto my hike in the middle of the day like that again. And I'm always gonna bring my external battery with me and make sure that I have a physical copy of the map if I'm hiking alone. But I'm glad it happened because this way, since I'm gonna be doing a lot more hikes these days in unfamiliar places that I've never been. I feel like this experience scared me enough to save me from something way worse happening at a later time by being less prepared. So I definitely think it happened for a reason, uh, but I just wanted to explain that story to you guys because I think it's pretty funny, honestly. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Love you.